My sweet goats, independent developers have it rough. We already know this. Making games isn't easy and it requires an insane amount of dedication. You pretty much start with early concept generation during which you work on a game design document accompanied with or followed by a bit of a prototype and then you lock in for the long haul. And that is just the beginning because let's say you want more people to see your game. Well then you got to go ahead and contact a publisher and then you got to go ahead and pitch the publisher on the game while you make the game. And then on top of that, you know that that publisher that you're pitching is also being pitched by other developers such as yourself. And then maybe you'll succeed. Maybe you'll have a company like Sony backing you up and everything's great. Everything is perfect. You got Sony backing you up, but that's just the next obstacle. Sure. You got a AAA publisher backing you, which means yeah, more money, more money. But that also means meeting the expectations of that publisher and the millions of fans that they've gone ahead and exposed you to. This is exactly what I imagine that Sean Murray had to go through with No Man's Sky. In fact, I would say that he had to deal with more because I left out another major video game development obstacle that comes about all the time. Having your entire office flooded and losing your game. For those of you that are familiar with the story of No Man's Sky, you'll also know that it's one that's wrought with tragedy. And uh, those are the stories that games media really like telling again and again. On top of that, gamers, they love being right and they hate being wronged. And let me tell you, guys, let me tell you, we felt pretty wronged when No Man's Sky dropped in the fall of 2016. And when you feel wronged, you tend to lash out. So at that time, it was kind of nice to, 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 to revel in, in, in No Man's Sky, Sky's demise because we felt wronged and we felt like that justice had been like somewhat served because at the end of the day it felt right to not like no man's sky so in this video i wanted to discuss an article i read on gamesindustry.biz titled hello games positive no man's sky stories don't do as well and that's a problem it details an on-stage interview with sean murray at develop brighton during which he laid out his experience with no man's sky and its less than spectacular launch develop for those of you that are in the dark is a games conference for developers to connect with and learn from one another seems like a generally wholesome event geared towards community development the article itself is a relatively short and interesting read and i've got it linked down for you below if you want to give it a read before continuing with the video Video. So the first thing that stood out to me was Murray's admission to not realizing just how much attention he had garnered from the various conference presentations that Hello Games had made leading up to the launch of No Man's Sky. At some point he said, you don't realize as a developer that you're talking to millions of people when you do something like E3, and most people who buy your game have only ever seen one video, and they've probably only seen 30 seconds of it. What I feel like this also says is that contrary to big, mainstream developers who are suited with marketing and public relations departments, independent developers may not have a bird's eye view of their market and are often focused on bringing the actual product to fruition. Sean Murray was incredibly passionate about No Man's Sky. You could literally feel how excited and nervous he was about the game leading up to its launch, and it seemed like a game that he wasn't just making for the world to enjoy, but also for himself to enjoy. And I don't know about you, but whenever I see something like that, I find that to be very inspiring. Of course, as we all know, not many people were very vocal about their enjoyment of No Man's Sky on launch because, well, it wasn't very enjoyable. This led to a complete media blackout on the company's part that allowed consumers and games media to theorize about what had happened to the developers or what they were working on, but ultimately acted as a major learning experience for Hello Games in terms of how they handled communication, particularly how they handled the press. Murray states, I think the reason for not talking to the press was a bunch of the press when I was growing up was kind of the hub of the community. What they wrote, I would read, and as a kid, I would think those things. I would just be led by what that journalist had said, and that would play a huge part in my ability to critique games and think about how games are made. Which is actually a statement that should ring true to anyone watching this video, as I'd say that the average core gamer will base the majority of their purchasing decisions off of what they're shown through promotional material or media coverage. Murray also believes that games journalism plays a different role today, and I can't help but agree with him, especially since social media plays such a massive role in the propagation of information these days. Outrage is much easier to sell than good news, and according to Murray, that was clear to see as positive stories about No Man's Sky after launch didn't trend as well. Of course, uh, I believe the game not delivering on what it was marketed as beforehand was a major factor in the poor reception of positive No Man's Sky stories, but there's definitely truth to Murray's evaluation of the current state of games media. I feel like games media in general is more consumer oriented, so what they're ending up doing is pretty much just showing people what they want to buy instead of actually going into the processes of, of what happens behind these studios as often as they should. Whether or not you agree with Sean Murray's opinion of the media, 
Media, the takeaway from all of this was that Hello Games distanced themselves from utilizing the press to resolve their issues. Communicating with them or issuing blog posts or press releases hindered them from focusing on their core and addressing their issues through the game itself. The article closes off with the following quote from Murray. If you want to communicate with the community, then you've got to do an update. You've got to release something. It's a brilliant thing and it starts to inform your thinking. How quickly can we get an update out? What can be in it? What do we want to say with this? It's a weird way of thinking, but it's a nice way of thinking. Now, obviously, Sean Murray had a lot more to say about game development during the interview, and it's quite clear that he's utilized his experiences as a cautionary tale. But his take on the media is one that I hold in high regard, as is beyond relevant in this day and age. In times of crisis, developers shouldn't rely on the media at all to connect with their audiences and stifle controversy. Instead, they should focus on raw data and attempt to provide their community with what they're asking for. In the case of Hello Games, it took a media blackout and two years to produce an update that would redeem their poor launch. Instead of over communicating, via the media, they officially communicated with their core by taking in what their fans were asking for and delivering on it with content. Not words. Content. Content is king. Content has always been king and good content is much louder and impactful than any press release, dev blog or interview. So I don't know how many of you guys have seen this, probably not that many, okay? Uh, when I made this video, nobody really kind of saw what I was doing, all right? Uh, so I think I made it for like 800 people and I went to town on No Man's Sky after I had played enough of it. I, I'd streamed it for like, I think, definitely over eight hours and I wanted to like it. And I was just, as I played it, every, every, time, I, every time I got to the next progression point, I was like, I don't, I don't like this game. I was losing my mind, okay? I remember that, I remember that I was losing my mind, but I don't remember how I really reacted to it in this video. And I wanted to kind of review that with you guys. So, uh, so this, this, <laughs> So this uh, this video is privated, okay? Let me see if I can actually bump the quality here because I don't want to watch it on some bullshit here. Uh, I'm hoping that it ups quality as soon as I play it, but man, oh man, <laughs> oh man, I made this thumbnail. Uh, my, <laughs> oh god, oh, oh god, I'm kind of embarrassed. I already don't, I already know this is gonna make me cringe, but let's go. Let's just watch this. Let's see, let's see where my mind was at when I played No Man's Sky in 2016 when it launched. Hello my sweet goats, I'm your host Bunty King and welcome to another- <laughs> Shit dude, oh my god. This format, this format, look at how small I am. Okay, let's go. The YouTube show hosted by an Indian idiot that was- Oh my god! What am I doing? What am I doing? Just keep going, let's just keep going. I'm gonna try not to, I'm gonna try not to, to, to- was conned by a jittery developer. That's right, good old c Bunty got his milked by a sneaky snake for his hard-earned cash. Of course, we're talking about Sean Murray of Hello Games. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I was one of the unfortunate ones that spent $80 on that title. $80 for a YouTuber at my level? Holy shit, dude! I mean, I feel like I've made like 20 bucks this month. That's f***ed up. Well, without further ado, I would like to share my experience of No Man's Sky with you. When No Man's Sky was announced in 2014 with that epic trailer everyone remembers, I was filled with awe. In fact, the trailer got me so shook, I cried. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually true. I did cry. I cried. I cried. No matter how huge we think we'll get, we're still just a tiny speck in the cosmos. And let me tell you, my fucking sweet goat, up until 2014, I had been waiting for a space game like No Man's Sky. I'm already a huge fan of procedurally generated games, considering the amount of time I've spent in roguelikes. I'm talking about games like Spelunky or games like Binding of Isaac. These games that just generate rooms and all that. Shit, just. I uh, I don't know how anybody anybody listen to me for longer than 10 seconds okay you're probably sitting there right now if you're a hater you're like oh well bunty i can't listen to you right now F you okay indian accent bro i don't know what the f i was thinking seriously I, and you could tell that i was putting it on I, just uh, no random sh all the time i fucking love that so to hear about a game that was going to let me explore galaxy after galaxy with near limitless possibilities excited me to no end. Today my dick might be out for Harambe. Oh my and god! My dick was out for No Man's Sky. <laughs> Jesus, Now you're probably wondering, passion? When does somebody else's passion oh my go god. And drive you to buy a game? And listen, it's simple. We're currently living in an era in which video game producers aren't putting out a lot of inspiring content. A majority of the games that come out today pretty much have this like paid DLC model and this season pass where you're essentially buying into a finished game in the future. In fact, many of the AAA major releases in recent years are bug ridden 
and almost unfinished. Well, so uh, I was uh, I was ahead of I was ahead of the, I, what, I, what can I say? Okay, my brain was was definitely ahead of the game. I, I just uh, just the way it is, you know. I'm oh, 2016, 2016, Bunty, everybody. At least at least the things that were coming out of my mouth were kind of kind of. Uh, that I was I thought I was gonna be way more brutal about this game than I than I thought it would be. But let's go. I, I think I think I'm about to get into it. I think I'm about to get into like some some, some real shit here. And I saw that he cared about his game. He talked about it like it was an ode to the science fiction novels of the 20th century. Essentially, everything he said, combined with that fantastic trailer at E3 2014, sold me right away. Then I heard about the flood at his studios and how his team had to pull together to recreate this game. And I was sold even more. I couldn't help but think, these guys deserve my money. They're passionate and they're trying something unique and I have to support them. Seriously, back then, you could have smelled Sean Murray's come on my breath. Flash oh my god, what the f***? Did I really say, what the f*** did I have to say that for? Oh man, yo, 2016 was a completely different, different time. Uh, but you know what, eh, you know, if you were to ask me, you know, if I would, if I would, you know, give, uh, give Papa Hideo a kiss on, kiss on a peepee, -pee, you know, I'd, I'd probably say yeah, but not really. ...about No Man's Sky beyond what we already knew about it, which was very little by the way. But I had faith, everything Sean Murray said about the game, all the promises, they all just seemed so genuine. How could someone so invested in this game, someone so passionate, lie to us about it? My mind was full of thoughts of adventure, discovering new planets, new species, trading with different alien races, starting an intergalactic empire. It was so nice to think about these wonderful things. It was all fine and dandy until I started noticing the inconsistencies and, in retrospect, the flat out lies. A couple of weeks prior to the game's release, a guy with a lot of money to waste bought the game for something like, I don't know, 1500 bucks then he went ahead and started detailing his experience with the game on the no man's sky subreddit and one of the things that stood out to me in his recounting was that there was a lack of variety in the planets and it reaffirmed this deep-rooted fear i had the fear that these procedurally generated planets and creatures weren't going to be all that different that the gameplay wasn't going to be as deep as i thought it would but hey I told myself that they were a patch and a tweak away from making the game incredible. And then they actually released these huge day one patch notes and the game looked amazing. They talked about slowing down the rotation of planets because people were losing track of the space station. It was like really, really cool. Little tiny little things that like just made this experience feel like it was going to be a really unique one. And then the game came out and I played it at midnight and I had, had a great time. And I woke up in the morning, I wanted to play it again. And I played it for eight hours that day. And then I played it for eight hours the next day. And then I stopped. During the time I played it, my brain had tricked itself into thinking that it was a good game. And I even went ahead and told you guys that it was a good game. That you'd enjoy it if you enjoyed space. That if you ever wanted to explore the f***ing galaxy, this was the game to go ahead and do it in. And for that, I am so sorry, my goats. I am so f***ing sorry because No Man's Sky is a f***ing sh** game. <laughs> <laughs> This goes beyond the early suggestion of multiplayer or the idea of exploring over resource gathering. I'm talking about the ending. As we all know, this game did not have a linear story and our quest was to get to the center of the galaxy. And in earlier interviews, Sean Murray had detailed that when you get to the center of the galaxy, the game was gonna change. Something would happen, something drastic, something miraculous. But nothing f***ing changes actually. Nothing at all. The only thing that happens is that you get warped back and you get to restart the f***ing game. The ending is sh** and Sean Murray is this generation's Peter Molyneux. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my Honestly, god. No Man's Sky is the biggest bust of 2016 and possibly I'm gonna go ahead and say and call it this decade in gaming. Anyway, that's all for today. Oh, f God. I call them this generation's Peter Molyneux. Oof. That's rough. That's real rough. Oh, boy. Oh, God. Okay, so now that we were able to witness just how much of a jerk I was during the initial launch of No Man's Sky, I wanted to get a little bit of insight into what was actually going on at the company, and I can't think of a better person than my good friend Lauren Carter, who used to work at Linet Studios, Two Point Studios, and even Hello Games. She did the community management uh, during their launch, and it's just, it was, uh, she's got she's got quite an interesting story to tell. She's an incredible person to listen to, very, very insightful, has a lot of experience in the industry and uh yeah let's just uh let's just go ahead and hear what she has to say so you were hired at hello games when they were when they were launching no man's sky and uh, i just wanted to know what were the circumstances you were hired under 
Well, it was it was kind of a weird one, to be honest. So I'd been working um, since the, the dramatic fall of Lionhead. I went to work for a company called Glowmade, who were a startup uh, made up of, of Vex Lions, essentially. Um, and unfortunately, uh, they lost funding and we were right next door to Hello Games. So we'd, we'd been watching, you know, the whole the whole thing. Every, every time something was in the news, we'd see all the, all the guys outside talking about it. And, you know, it was kind of exciting to be so close to what they were doing. Um, and then on launch day, or maybe it was the day before No Man's Sky launch, um, my boss at Glowmade basically said, oh, by the way, um, in order to continue to get some funding, we're actually going to loan you um, to Hello Games and you can just go and work there for a, for a month and they'll pay your salary so that would help you know help out with the company I was working for so yeah sure so I was literally parachuted in having absolutely no knowledge of how they ran their community or you know any any of their kind of values as far as that was con concerned um, were, they, were they even running a community at that point was well that... <laughs> it it had been it, you know it had a little bit of of nurturing here and there and then when everything started to get you know really really big I, I you know you've got to remember that that the hello games team is like 12 people or it yeah, wasn't it was a time, small team you know? small small team next to nothing so no one had the time to be focusing on this kind of stuff um i think there was uh, there was a fantastic girl called sal who was in there just before uh, when when i joined and had been there a little bit longer and i think she was handling all the customer services type you know things that were mm -hmm. going to happen but you know, just straight in there on launch day um, and, and realizing, you know, I'd never, I'd come from a, a console background, so I hadn't dealt with Steam forums, for example, at all, ever. Um, and that was my <laughs> my uh, my gateway into uh, looking after Steam forums. It was okay. madness. Yeah, I can imagine. So how did you manage the hate and, and how difficult was it to not take it to heart? Well, th this is the thing, you know, even, even just being there for a month, it only worked out just over a month, I think, in the end. You, it's hard not to take these things to heart. And I think it, it's difficult um, for any community manager, because especially if you're constantly absorbing, you know, a, a project like No Man's Sky that did attract so much um, negativity, you have to be able to, to let a lot of it wash over you. Um, and the team were fantastic. You know, the, I was working with uh, Coda, Simon Carter, um, and between us, we were just kind of finding a problem. I would send it to him. He would find the solution, send it back, and, and we were just trying to get to as many people as possible um, like that and just dealing with it that way. But I do remember one day, because the the thing about Guildford is it's, it's particularly small, um, and there's a lot of game studios in there. So people who live, you know, live around Guildford tend to know where all the studios are. Um, but with Hello Games, their address was actually on on the internet. So we were getting, you know, gifts and, and muffins and, and all sorts, you know, cakes and all kinds of stuff being sent by amazing fans wanting to support us. That's amazing. But the, the fear, yeah, it was. It really was amazing. We got, you know, and I, and there I was, say so, us. So I, while all this hate was happening, there was yeah. people who were like, we see what you're trying to do. We Absolutely. want to support you. That's beautiful. That's actually very Sean, beautiful. Sean really attracts a, a very, you know, I, I think Sean attracts strong feelings either way. He's That's just the, the kind I can, of guy that I he can is, relate. So. I can definitely relate. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all can to a certain <laughs> extent. Um, so, yeah, lo lots of people were sending, you know, care packages and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, you can't, when you're the community manager that's reading, and, and don't get, you know, like, the thing I, I feel like I need to stress it was not my job to respond to anything publicly. Um, you know, as far as the Twitter accounts went and the Facebook account, Sean didn't really, you know, it was, there was just too much happening. The fire was too big almost to, to think that one person answering a question at a time um, in a situation where the whole of the gaming world was looking at this one title. It, it wasn't really gonna be that, you know, you'd need an army of people um, and a really clear strategy. Um, and there was just no time. There was no time to do that. So we just went straight in, my, myself and, and Sal, who, like I said, was helping with the with the CS stuff, um, and just tried to answer Steam issues and all of the customer services stuff that was coming in. But you can't help but absorb all of this stuff, you know, all the negativity, et cetera, et cetera. And I remember one day, there were only a few people in the office. There was a knock at the door, um, and I was closest. So I got up to answer it. And I opened the door, and there was no one there. And I just remember thinking to myself, as I stepped out to look either side to see if there was anyone there, oh God, this is it. <laughs> like This is when I get hurt in the games industry. This is the moment because it had got so negative and the address was out there for anyone to find. I genuinely thought 
someone's going to jump me. <laughs> this is what's going to happen now. But you know what it was? A fan had sent us pizzas. <laughs> Oh, that's very sweet. And there was a pizza guy just standing there, like looking around, not knowing where the door was. So, it so it's was... funny because I was just going to ask you if there was any one interaction you clearly remember from like the No Man's Sky launch week, you know, something that left I a major that impression. Would that would be yeah, it. That, that would, would be, be it. it. Be just, a fan yeah, leaving just... pizza. That's a really yeah. nice memory to take away from this experience that would have been otherwise, you know, very, very, very negative. It really, yeah, I, th I think the, th the thing was, it was it was so exciting, you know, to know that you were going into and, you know, the offices were nothing special. They were just so unsuspecting that you would have no idea that this team that had, you know, made this incredible thing, like aside from and you know, let's take a moment to acknowledge that it's definitely changed. You know, in the last few years, they've they've turned it around. Um, that game is now seems to be at least exactly what people wanted um but at that time yeah i mean you you just have no idea that that it was it was like a treasure trove that team worked so hard and they were so tight and it was the quietest working environment i've ever been in in my life like obviously i'm i'm quite loud and uh, and talkative but those guys just head down got on with it and until they fixed the problems and and got the game to where they they believed it should be there's you know i have a huge amount of respect for the uh, the hello games team absolutely it was really it was really quite fascinating i feel like when the announcement had happened that like they were going to come up with an update i'd completely for i'd forgotten about the game you know i'd forgotten mm -hmm. about what was going on and i was like oh man they were still working on this whole time and i was like that's yeah. serious commitment and and then you know if you look at if i look back at interviews with sean murray i think I'm like, why? Well, of course not. Of course that guy was going to continue working on this game. He really cared about this game. It was so clear that he yeah. wanted this game to be an amazing experience that that everyone was going to remember forever, you know? And I will remember yeah. No Man's Sky forever. Even though I, you know, even though I, I, I didn't uh, didn't like it at launch, I did recently try playing it again and I was like, oh, okay. This is they cool. They turned it around. They definitely For sure. Did. They turned it around to the extent, I don't know if you saw this on... Um on twitter they had they've moved offices now you know once once the the you know no man's sky was the success that it was they they managed to leave the the really quite run down offices that we were all working in at the time and, and move somewhere better recently their community and and this is just i mean it may have taken a few years but i the saw this around here i think is, i think it's you know, fantastic are you talking with the, yes. the, the the are you talking with the uh the the banner that they billboard. bought up the billboard yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the billboard opposite the office and put a huge thank you to hello games on there and you know that's that's all any of us can ever hope for really bunts it doesn't need to be that big <laughs> but any dev that's working on any game that is, you know loved that's that's all we want thank you for for doing that thing thank you for pouring all your creativity and and time into making something for everyone else to play and i think it's fantastic that they they got to that point where they got a true turnaround and everyone everyone could see just how well they've done with it it's incredible. So uh, how, what kind of advice would you give to other community managers who may be part of a team that didn't meet market expectations? Well, it's such a tough one because unfortunately, you know, the world that we live in means that people will take to the internet and say something utterly revolting to you. Um, my, adv I mean, what I've always done, and it was not what I, the, the route that I chose to go with No Man's Sky, because like I said, there just wasn't time. Um, but with the Fable franchise, when we were making Fable Legends and people weren't particularly excited about that, <laughs> I started getting quite nasty about it. Um, I, you know, kill them with kindness. It, it's, it's really, you just, sometimes you just need to point out to the person that's, that's baying for your blood and hoping that your studio gets burnt down and you can't feed your children. You, you just have to kind of, hey man, sorry to hear you feel that way. Is there anything that I can take to the dev team? Do you have any criticism that I could take to the dev team that might help them um, whilst, you know, developing? And I think taking that that tone of voice almost in like 99% of the time, you'll see the, uh, I don't want to say troll, but sometimes, you know, trolling behavior. Um, you'll see that back down. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't realize that someone was actually reading this. Um, you know, I love the game. It's just blah, blah, blah. And then you yeah. can actually have a decent conversation. It's yeah. it's difficult to do because 
the response you're going to have if you're embedded with a dev team and you love the game they're making and you think they're amazing people and they're you know it's so creative and they've done all these fantastic things and you know it inside out and you and you live and breathe and love it it's so difficult to hear someone being negative and, and cruel and nasty about it so that first step to responding with with uh, you know over the top kindness that's the hardest part is just taking a moment realizing this person doesn't you know doesn't fully understand game development might not understand why decisions have been made etc cetera, etc cetera, and you can just try and have a decent conversation with them well it's one tough, thing but one, it works. one thing's for certain though I'm, I'm 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 certain that if you were able to actually send you literal audio sorry i'm <laughs> let me just go ahead and just Re, let me rephrase this because it's, it's really really late and i'm like my brain is just jumbling up sentences now at this point <laughs> like it really is um uh i'm certain that uh that if you were capable of sending audio clips to them s explaining the situation you would disarm them completely because would i don't know do i mean i think it totally would i mean i'm just i i honestly like listen to your voice when we whenever we talk and i'm just like how does this person have such a good voice and how can anyone possibly ever get angry at her? So it's oh, uh, it's you. real nice. I haven't even finished my first coffee of the morning. You're so sweet. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thanks so much for uh, talking to me. I really appreciate it. I just wanted to kind of like get your get your impression on uh, on. Uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts essentially uh, regarding regarding this because I'm, you know, doing do, doing a video for No Man's Sky. So. For sure. Bunce, so, I'm yeah. always here to talk to you about video games. You know that. Absolutely. It's quite wonderful. My sweet goats, that's about all I got for you. Thank you so much for watching. Look, if you liked it, feel free to go ahead and leave a like, hit the sub button, and ding that bell icon so YouTube lets you know that I uploaded a video. You want YouTube to let you know that I did that. Look, the other thing you can do is if you are, uh, you know, uh, you, you want to see more of me, you want to see me more often, you need me, you need me in your life regularly. Twitch.tv slash Mr. Bunty King, where I stream regularly. We can go ahead and play some games together, okay? We're going to play some games together, okay? All of us, some games together. Sometimes you'll watch me play, but you, you'll, let, you'll be part of the process. Guys, I love you. Bye.